uh, you know, how far is current social science able to describe and explain process of processes of social societal transformations? And I would say it is not at the moment. Uh, at least, at least not sufficiently. And the, the big question is, how do we how do we get there? You know, what actually needs to be happening in in educational uh, systems to uh, I would say to perceive the need to have better signs on transformations, because I think we are at the beginning. It's not that we don't have history, it's not that we don't have biology, it's not that we don't have social science and sociology and psychology, apart from the fact that this is all like, of course, too silo, silo based. But there is quite a lot of um, ongoing uh, on multidisciplinary approaches. And if you particularly live in the EU, like I do, uh, then, then kind of there's almost no project that is not a multi-transdisciplinary project. But, but it, it, the question is, does it hit the point? You know, does it really hit the point? And I do think it doesn't hit the point as long as as the science stays in the in the in the historic realm of a certain definition of reality and a certain definition of uh, society. And so, what actually needs to happen? is to rewind or to let's say uh, transform or to to move towards a new fundamental question and that question is so prevalent at the moment uh, where we're still in the middle of the pandemic you know where we have uh, a kind of biodiversity loss where we are in the middle of a climate crisis the 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 new really north star uh, that that not only is relevant for repurposing economies, as I wrote in the in the Cadmus article, but also repurposing education is the is the deeper question of how do we serve life? And now you can say, oh, well, wait a minute, this is too big a question. <laughs> there are too many answers and there might be political answers that we don't want. And, you know, like, so, so you, you may, in a way, you may say, no, that question is too simple. I would say, no, that question is not too simple if we add a few other questions. And one of the one of the issues that, that is really like, like my, my passion is the question, what give life gives life to systems? That is a very fundamental question. And that leads us to understanding that we do not understand enough. And just to give you an illustration of that, uh, there is uh, you probably uh, what's her name? Suzanne Simat. Uh, the biologist and the, the forester who has uh, written the book about uh, finding the mother tree, you know, kind of, uh, she's done lots and lots of research about the communication and, and the possibility of, of interacting with each other in forests. And you would say, ah, oh, you know, this is just a side issue of biology. And I said, no, no, wait a minute. This is not a side issue. This is about understanding what gives life to systems. And uh, what is so fascinating about her work is that she tells us what we don't know yet because we don't even start looking at these things. So what actually needs to be happening in education is to move what at the moment is at the fringes of the system, you know, kind of all these crazy people who do some funny stuff. Yeah, so that, that actually needs to move into the center. And I'm not saying, that these people at the fringes of the system need to take over the entire system. I, I'm not saying this, but, but there needs to be a new kind of openness to say, wait a minute, do we ask the right questions? You know, and are our research questions so dominated by not only the last kind of 40, 50, 60 years of, of neoliberal capitalism, are our research questions determined by centuries, if not a couple of thousand years, of, of thinking processes that, that enhance the human brain and thinking in binary options. And interesting enough, the internet is the most, <laughs> most highly developed binary options, and there are people who develop a different internet. So, okay, I don't want to go there. But what is so interesting is to, to say um, in education, we need to I'm not, I'm not saying completely overcome the binary thinking because it might be useful to a certain extent and it has been useful a lot in science. We don't want the, to, to, to throw out the baby with the 
<laughs> bath water, uh, but we need to be able to integrate a completely different thinking. And that is a thinking that at the moment is not judged as, let's say, credible enough. I mean, like, of course, there, there are many people within the, 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 the science system, within the tertiary education system that are already walk in this direction. But if you look closely, and that is quite interesting also to see in feminist research, because feminist research was only introduced like in the 70s, 80s into universities. And uh, there is brilliant work that has been, has been done in, in feminist research. However, uh, number two, it didn't become mainstream, although the questions that were asked of feminist research should by now be mainstream. And this is not just about gender equality, equality. this is about a different view of life processes. Uh, and, and secondly, if you look closely, the style of feminist research became more and more like traditional science. So, you know, so it means that if we talk about transformations, we need to be aware that uh, a certain structural setting of our organizations in the, in the education system uh, encourage us to, to think in the old way. So, so the big challenge is now how to move a question like what gives lives to system at the center of education, at the, you know, how to make such a question a new North Star of, of what we are doing. Because if I ask the question, what gives life to system? Wow, suddenly there's a lot to discover that we don't know. And suddenly what we already know, we might start to rearrange and understand in a different way. So it's terribly useful. And um, kind of the pandemic has shown that one can one can have different opinion opinions about about vaccination or not vaccination and one can have different opinions about the money that's being earned with vaccination but what is so interesting is that i would say for the first time in history scientists work together to understand the whole system in a completely different way and without that and, and this is normal science. This is not the new life science, you know, that we are talking about. But, but it, something is already starting that is transdisciplinary, that goes beyond the traditional ways of doing things, that um, it creates uh, a, a, an element that needs to be coming into education much, much more. And that is an element of responsibility for the future. And uh, so, I believe that that if if we enter the question what gives life to systems into education, it makes a huge difference and people are going to become creative about answering these questions in their particular field. It could be agriculture, it could be biology, it could be psychology, it could be sociology, it could be math, it could be, you know, like, uh, but, but, the, but the question uh, would engender a lot of further questions around particular subjects. And immediately, if you ask such a question, you have to take a holistic approach. Uh, you have to take a, 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 a human approach. I would say you have to take a humane approach because the humane approach actually includes your relationship with nature. And you have to take an approach that is a more societal approach towards an egalitarian society. Because you, you will notice pretty soon that anything that is about uh, um, abuse of power, you know, kind of, or, or domination of others is certainly not life enhancing, even if it claims to be, you know, like dictatorship sometimes. So, but, but in the medium to long run, never in history was any domination or any any abuse of power, life enhancing. So it is actually necrophil, it's life deadening and not uh, deadening, it's not biophil. And so the, the issue is that it, it is so important to, to find that central way of looking at, at what a responsibility on this planet in a different way. And honestly, I think this is starting the, the gender equality is an important step towards it, simply because domination and let's say abuse of hierarchy and abuse of power 
and uh, people not kind of certain parts of the population not being able to live their full potential is not life enhancing. It doesn't serve life. And so the, the issue that I would like to get across is yes, if we bring a new North Star into thinking why and how we educate and what for, and, and not only look at the topic of life enhancement, but also in, enhance the spirit of students in terms of excitement about what they do and why they do that and what the contribution is for the future, then that would make a huge difference. And I believe that it's possible to bring this in in the current educational system. 